Today, we are going to be talking about digestion. So if you find yourself in a place where you're constantly bloated, you're having stomach aches, you're dealing with not being able to see progress because of your digestion, then go ahead and stay tuned because we're gonna go over a tier system to address any kind of irregularity when it comes to your digestion and any kind of discomfort you might be feeling. When we look at tier one, we're gonna be looking at our habits and our routine. I know you might be thinking straight to food, I need to eliminate a certain kind of food, but it could be something as simple as your habits or your routine around food. So first being able to look at your environment. Are you eating in a stressful environment? Are you eating in your car or really quick before you go to the next thing that you're going to? Or the people that you're eating around, maybe they have a very big stress on you and eating around them doesn't put you in a good environment. This can drastically affect how your food is digested. For the next one, your heart rate, getting your heart rate down. Because when we look at eating, we wanna make sure that we're in a rest and digest state. If our heart rate gets too high, we're gonna be in that fight or flight mode. And so being able to get into a parasympathetic state, taking some deep breaths or taking some time for your heart rate to come down, whether it's you just finished a training session or maybe you just finished rushing around like a chicken with your head cut off and now you finally get to sit down to eat, instead of immediately eating, being able to take some time, take some breaths, let that heart rate come down close to resting heart rate. I've seen this time and time again with our clients at Physique Development. They're having stomach issues and it came down to them training and immediately eating right after and not letting their heart rate come down. They didn't have to take a look at food options. It was just that one thing. So then being able to also go into the speed at which you're eating. I will admit I am a former speed eater where I just finished my food extremely fast and that also led to a lot of stomach aches. So being able to thoroughly chew your food. Digestion begins in your mouth so ensuring that you can set up your digestion for the absolute best and that's going to come down to chewing till your food's in a near liquid form because digestion is easiest for liquids than small particles and then large particles. So being able to really chew your food thoroughly is going to be so extremely helpful when it comes to your digestion. And then also going into your water intake. So of course we wanna see good water intake throughout the day, but what can cause some issues is drinking too much water directly before or during a meal, because all of that liquid can wash away some of the gastric juices and it can cause your digestion to not be as good while you're eating. So just sipping as needed throughout a meal, but not chugging down water during those times directly before or during a meal. We'll go ahead and go into tier two, which is going to be food. So it is extremely helpful to take a look at this, especially if you've looked through all of tier one and you're still seeing some issues when it comes to your digestion. So one is going to be looking at your macro allotment and distribution. So being able to see, especially if you are a macro tracker, how your food is allotted and distributed throughout the day. So if you're having a really, really big meal and always having a stomach ache after it, that could be the cause of, hey, I need to spread my food out differently throughout the day, as well as being able to pay attention to how much of each macro you're eating in one sitting, because each person is going to kind of have a personal threshold for how things digest. I know for myself, when it comes to protein, I can't eat much more than 45 grams of protein in one sitting without it causing a stomach ache. The next is going to be fiber distribution and allotment. We want to have our recommended daily amount of fiber, which is going to be 10 to 14 grams per a thousand calories. But each person is gonna vary slightly on fiber on where they thrive the absolute best. And for myself, it's normally on the lower end of the spectrum for fiber. But even if I hit my exact fiber per day, if I get it in different ways, whether it's the sourcing of the fiber that I'm getting of different protein bars instead of from whole foods, or if it's in the situation where I am eating a large chunk of it at one time, that can really disrupt my digestion as well. So not only being able to have consistent fiber from a day-to-day -day basis, but also ensuring that your fiber is distributed throughout the day in a way that makes you feel your absolute best. 
Next is gonna go ahead and take a look at food logs. So if you're tracking in MyFitnessPal, this is gonna be pretty simple to go ahead and take a look back on. If you're not currently tracking your food and you're having a hard time figuring out what's causing it, go ahead and carry around a little notebook or the notes app on your phone, phenomenal. Anytime after you eat a meal, just making a quick note about how you feel and then updating it in an hour or so, 30 minutes to an hour, especially if you're having adverse symptoms. But that's gonna be extremely helpful to be able to nail down what's causing the issue when it comes to your digestion. Instead of feeling like you immediately have to eliminate everything, you could start to see a trend of exactly when you're having stomach aches or after a different situation, scenario, or meal that you are having. And then that leads us into food sourcing, as well as taking a look at FODMAPs. So when it comes to food sourcing, you can hit your macros, but not having the best when it comes to quality of food. So being able to really look at how you're sourcing your food and how it's making you feel, that's going to be very personal. Some people do great with dairy, other people do not, as well as being able to look at how much processed foods you're eating versus whole foods. Different little things on there that I'll make a quick checklist earlier, but I'll mention one of them now, like artificial sweeteners, where it might be something possibly that your gut is not having the best reaction to. And when I talk about FOD, maps. These are going to be something that there's going to be high and low FODMAPs and high FODMAP are going to be higher irritant food that we've seen when it comes to passing through the gut of just having a hard time digesting. That might be going into how your digestion is feeling. And the last one with food is gonna come down to meal timing. So again, you can hit your food perfectly within a day, but maybe you have one meal and then you wait 10 hours before your next meal. That can cause some digestive disruption, especially because we look at the other impacts hormones have. So if you wait a super long time in between your meals, not only could you be in a place where maybe your insulin is now low, so you're feeling not your best, but then now your stress is high because you're so hungry. That that can really mess up how things are sitting with you. And these all kind of link back together, but being able to really take a look at how you're spacing out your meals and what distribution they need to be throughout the day of, do you need to eat every three hours? Is it maybe every two and a half? Is it four hours? What does that look like for you to feel your absolute best and to not put yourself in a situation where maybe you're hangry or really anxious because you have waited too long to eat? Tier number three is going to be taking a look at your stress, your sleep, your posture, and your breathing. So if you haven't learned how to be elite just yet, you should go ahead and check out the sleep video on how to get the absolute best sleep. But your sleep is going to go into your digestion. So when we look at our stomach, it is not going to be working at the same function when we're awake. And so when it comes down to not only the quality of our sleep, how close we eat to bed, but then also looking at how it disrupts different hormones and then what impact that has. It's going to change your levels of leptin and ghrelin, and that's going to affect your appetite and your satiation. And so that is going to affect how your digestion goes, as well as again, your cortisol maybe being off and then your digestion not getting the proper rest that it needs to be able to continue to function in the way that it needs to. Then when we're taking a look Look at stress, but when you're in that fight or flight mode, actually blood pulls away from the stomach. So it halts digestion or drastically slows down digestion. So making sure that you are paying attention to those stress levels, because if your stress is unchecked or unmanaged, then it can put you in a place of chronically bad digestion amongst a whole host of other things of having chronic stress. And if you want some stress management techniques or tips, go ahead and check the show notes on a podcast that we did going over that. Then we're gonna go ahead and go into posture and breathing. These two can kind of be lumped together, but your posture does have an effect on how your food is digested. I have caught myself many a times eating a meal or sitting at my desk kind of like this. And if we think about all of our organs and our intestines, probably being all smushed over on each other doesn't allow them to function the absolute best, but it can really affect your digestion as a whole, how your posture is. And then we go to that breathing. If you do not know how to breathe with your diaphragm, 
You could be putting yourself in a constantly stressed place because breathing with your diaphragm and breathing properly is gonna put you in that rest and digest, but you might be a belly breather or a chest breather and have some issues when it comes to being able to breathe properly. So all four of these are extremely important and they can relate to one another and they affect so many other processes in the body, but they are extremely important to pay attention to when it comes to your digestion. So tier four is going to be if you've gone through everything in the first three tiers, you have truly implemented it and you're still having a lot of digestive discomfort. That could be something where it comes to your medication. So take a look at what your medication does because there are medications that deplete certain vitamins or minerals and that could be causing issues with your digestion and also being able to look at the side effects. You could possibly have a too low of stomach acid. So being able to do a quick little test with baking soda can give you some answers of if you do need to take a supplement to be able to help with your stomach acid levels. And it could be something like you have IBS, IBD, Crohn's, you have ulcers or possibly celiac that's causing a deeper issue within your digestion than just addressing these few tiers. But I will give you one quick little extra list. You can take a look at carbonation as this can sometimes cause some indigestion and some bloating. Taking a look at chewing gum, especially if we're looking at sugar-free chewing gum, that could be circling to the artificial sweeteners, which are next on the list. I do not wanna demonize artificial sweeteners and I'm definitely not demonizing carbonation or chewing gum. I'm just giving them as options when it comes to digestion. I myself personally have IBS and I have found things like chewing gum and drinking carbonation can make my digestion worse. It's not the same for everyone, but I do want to make these notes. So please do not think that you have to cut these out or that these are bad for your health. It's taking a look at how it fits within your life. Also being able to take a look at condiments and seasoning. So if you took a look at the FODMAP list, something like garlic, that is a high irritant. So if you season a lot of your foods, if you're not seeing trends when you're looking at food logs and food journals, you might need to take a look at the seasonings that you are using. In the same line as chewing gum, drinking through a straw could cause some digestive issues. So you might wanna play around with switching to just drinking from a cup instead of drinking from a straw. And the last two things are gonna come down to the bathroom. So looking at the height of your toilet. I know it's an odd tip, but anyone who is team squatty potty like myself will understand this one of the toilet height does matter. So making sure that the toilet height is right for you, as well as looking at your bathroom routine. This is another one that pops up a lot of times when it comes to clients and being able to simply just allow a little bit more time in the bathroom and not make their life so go, go, go allows them to have a better bowel movement. So making sure that you have a routine, you have privacy, you have the right toilet height, and you give yourself time to go to the bathroom. I understand what schedule, sometimes it might not be the ideal time to go and have a bowel movement. But when you're in a place that you don't allow your body to have a bowel movement when it needs to, then when you need to, or when you have the time, it can be a little bit harder to pass, especially if it is affecting your activities of daily living. And it likely is if you've landed on this video. So definitely give all of these tips a try. Start at tier one and work your way through. And I hope that this helps. And if you're new, new here. My name is Sue and we would absolutely love for you to join the physique development family and you can do so by hitting the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber and you want to be notified on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays when we post videos, you can go ahead and hit the bell to get a notification for that. But we'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.